because all sorts of companies were completely obsessed with miniaturization, making things as small and portable as possible. The only problem was that if you wanted something that lasted for any reasonable amount of time, it would look something like this. I mean, this phone is about 80% battery. So camcorders of around that era had batteries that would only last about half an hour or an hour before they were cut out, which is not ideal if you want to capture life's most important moments. The public appetite for electronics that could be both small and long-lasting drove an intense period of battery R&D. And this was when scientists turned to the volatile metal called lithium. The idea of a lithium battery had been around for a really long time, since the 1950s. But as a material, lithium has that habit of exploding, which doesn't make it ideal to put in products that you're going to sell to the public. That changed in the mid-1980s. A Japanese chemist called Akira Yoshino found a way to stop lithium self-destructing by introducing a special carbon-based material. It held the volatile lithium ions in place, stopping them from running amok and making a battery far less likely to go bang. In 1991, the first lithium ion battery was released into the wild in the form of this right here, a little bit of history. This is the Sony CCD TR1. And it's a camcorder from 1991. Hi. This is just all that people did, was turn around to people's faces and zoom in and out on them. Simpler times. And thus, a revolution in the lithium ion battery was born. With the new batteries, camcorders could now last for several hours before needing a recharge. The lithium ion battery quickly found its way into everything that needed to be picked up and unplugged, reducing its size or massively extending its life. After three decades of development, the average lithium ion battery in your laptop can safely store as much energy as a hand grenade. Emphasis on the word safely.